Welcome back. Today, we're going to cover the basics of how to use an oscilloscope to measure signals you're interested in. For our experiment today, I'm going to use a PC-based oscilloscope that's connected via USB to my computer. It has various connectors on the front that you can use to attach to the signals you're interested in. Different oscilloscopes will vary in the layout and the format, especially between PC-based oscilloscopes and standalone oscilloscopes. But generally speaking, they'll have BNC connectors like this. The first two are for channel 1 and channel 2, that allow you to independently measure two different signals. And the third one is a triggering input that allows you to do certain timing things. The other two that I have here are for the function generator, which we'll cover in a later video. To attach signals to these connectors, you can do one of two things. This is a scope probe that I can use. It has a BNC connector on this end that I can connect directly to my scope. And there's a probe on this end that I connect to the signal that I want to that I want to measure. It has one end for ground and one end for the signal. Here's a B and C cable that I can also use to measure my signals. Again, there's a B and C end that I connect directly to the oscilloscope. Notice that this end doesn't have any probes that I can directly connect to wires. Typically, use a cable like this to attach it to an instrument like this one. For today, I'm going to use this function generator. It's just going to output some simple basic sine waves and square waves. It doesn't really matter for the tutorial exactly what waves we use. We just want to get an idea of how to use it. Now that I've connected my signal to my oscilloscope, I'm going to open up the oscilloscope software. Notice that channel 1 is on, and I can see the signal being drawn in yellow. The vertical axis represents voltage, and the horizontal axis represents time. The scale of each axis is given by these division markers. Each channel has this multiplier setting, which you set according to the type of probe you're using. Typically, scope probes will require a 10x setting because of their impedance. However, because I'm just using a BNC cable, I'm going to change the setting to 1x. If I look at the display, I can see the signal, but it isn't being very well presented. To bring it into view, I can adjust the vertical and horizontal scale. On other oscilloscopes, you might have to do this using knobs. When you're zooming in on time, you might observe an effect known as aliasing. For example, here, it looks like I'm close to bringing the signal into view, but as I zoom in, the characters of the signal suddenly changes. To prevent this effect from happening, and to make sure that you're looking at the real signal, make sure you zoom in far enough in time, like so. Rather than manually adjusting the vertical and horizontal settings, I can use the auto set feature to let the scope decide what's best. If I reset back to the original scale, we can try this out. Be careful when using this feature. Sometimes you'll have to do a little bit of manual work to bring the signal into view to your liking. Notice this indicator here. This is known as the trigger level. This determines where the scope starts drawing the signal at the indicator here. The scope will try to draw the signal so that the voltage level indicated by this trigger occurs at this marker. Notice how you can change the trigger level to your liking. If you go out of range of the signal, the trigger might not behave as you expect. So make sure you set the trigger level appropriately. You can also change the horizontal placement. Notice how the trigger occurs when the signal is rising. You can change that setting here. You can make it either a falling or rising edge that is triggered on.
Notice that you can also use a single trigger, which means that as soon as the scope detects a trigger point, it locks on that signal. If you want to go back to a continually updating signal, just go back to the auto mode. In addition to all that, you can move the signal itself around the view to your liking. The reference level of the signal is indicated by its own marker. Here are some more advanced features that scopes sometimes have. If you care about how the signal looks over a period of time, you can turn on the history mode. The scope will display several iterations of the waveform on top of each other. If there's noise present that you want to clean up, you can turn on the averaging mode. The scope will collect a certain number of waveforms and average them together to provide a smoother view. Another feature that's quite useful are the markers. They're both horizontal and vertical markers that you can use. These allow you to measure precisely relative voltages and relative time deltas. Using simple features like this, you can learn how to use a scope very effectively. Next time, we'll cover how to capture and measure multiple signals using the oscilloscope effectively, as well as how to use an external trigger.